Hi, I'm Grant Moon. I'm making this video for Mustad on modifying the Mustad Dynamic Horseshoe and I'm going to modify it for a horse with side bone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the shoe and I'm going to chamfer it from the inside toenail all the way around with the biggest chamfer on the outside toe, chamfering right round to the outside heel. The inside heel is going to be slightly narrowed to give a little bit of thickness. So what, when you look at this shoe, what we're looking at is a right front. So I'm going to push the clip out and flatten it down. So now the clip's not in the way. I'm hitting the shoe at an angle on the outside edge to chamfer the outside edge and make it thinner, working right back across the section, but blending out at the center of the toe. So I flatten it. I do it again. I chamfer the outside edge, making it thinner, right around the outside edge. Past the clip, as we come to the center, and just blend out like a roll toe. What we're going to do next, we're going to do the inside branch. We'll just pinch it up to give a little thickness, so the whole shoe is slightly leaning to the outside corner. Then once we've done that, we'll take a fitting heat, because we don't want to bend the clip cold. And in our fitting heat, the first thing we'll do is bend the clip back up, like to normal, then we'll shape the shoe up. So now we go to the horn, we just forge it from the quarters to the heel, overlapping the blows, just to pinch it up a little bit, just creating a little bit of extra thickness. First thing I do, I push the clip back over. We can do it almost like drawing a clip. We set it into the web. I'll shape the toe. Shape it from toe quarter to heel quarter and shape the branch. So we've got our chamfered edge, just slightly thickened on the inside heel. We can see that the outside branch looks like it's turning in a lot. Well, with these holes with a little bit of side bone, they get a little bit contracted on the outside heel quarter. So we've got the shoe following the foot, but because we've widened the shoe, it can also be shod to the coronary band. Now, we're off to the grinder, just to put the last bit of finish on it. So what I've chosen now is a, a Mustad E4 Slim to go in this Mustad Dynamic shoe. It fits well into the nail holes, but where I've chamfered the shoe, the head sticks up once I've driven it. Once we've clinched it, we'll go back and we'll rasp the head of the nail off, so we've got a really nice smooth surface on the outside for the horse to land on. Just done an evaluation of this horse and we can see that, that it's landing a little bit hard on the outside, it's got some side bone changes. We've got a little bit of a conformational defect, he's rotated in and we've got contracted heel on the outside. So what we're going to do is we're going to trim the foot, try and get it as balanced as possible. What we're going to put on is a mustard dynamic shoe that's been modified for a horse with side bones. So we're going to chamfer the outside edge of the shoe off and give a little bit of width from the quarters to the heel. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to take away some of the excess sole and frog so then I can see exactly how I'm going to trim it. So I'm just going to do a bit of cleaning up first. Clean the excess frog. What I'm doing now is I'm looking down the long line of the leg. I keep the fetlock below the elbow, look down the long line, and then I look for flat and balance. So I get the foot perpendicular to the short line of the leg on this one because there's a deviation. Plan what I'm doing with my nippers. And the better I use my nippers, the less work I'll have to do with my rest. I've got the Hella XL original. This is a slightly wider rasp than normal, but to save weight, they've made it thinner. 
to a really good concentration of teeth on both sides. I like to keep my glass flat with the foot when I'm leveling. I don't pick my rasp off the foot. That will encourage us to get the foot unflat. So I keep contact. I keep my rasp in contact with the foot. Get it basically flat. And I come with a smooth side and just finish it off. A little shape up around the toe. Don't take too much. All right, let's try and create a nice foot shape. What I want to look at now is level and balance and make any slight modifications if necessary. So what I look at now is I look at a little bit of flair that I've got and I look at what level that I'm going to dress the hoof up to. I don't just like to strip them to the top for no reason. So I just clean the foot up, dress it off the top. What I've done now is I've selected the shoe for the foot. What I've selected is a Mustad Dynamic horseshoe. This shoe's a little bit wide web, this model, and has side clips. I've chosen side clips so I can blunt the toe and set the toe back a little bit because the horse is a long past in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold out the outside clip. I'm going to forge down the outside edge of the shoe, fold the clip back, and then fit the shoe. So it's going to be set back half the thickness of the hoof wall. It's going to have chamfered outside edge and it's going to be fit wide on the outside heel. And I, I emphasize it's going to be fit wide, not long. We don't want the horse pulling shoes off. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to push the clip out, flatten it. Now I'll start at the inside toe, overlapping my blows and chamfering the outside edge right round to the outside heel. Nice chamfer. Blend the whole way. Flatten it back out. Clean it up again one more time. It's a re really easy thing to do and beneficial to lots and lots of older horses that are still competing. Bend the clip up, just almost like making a handmade clip over the edge of the anvil. Flatten the shoe and just set our clip into the web. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to blunt the toe so I can set it back a little bit and then I'll shape the shoe up and blunt the toe. Almost like squaring a toe but without the flat, quite as much flatness. Now we can go and hot fit. Now I'm not burning down and pulling back, I'm not trying to burn it onto the foot. I'm pulling it back to get the perimeter fit right first. I'm just going to cut my clips in a little bit. Don't make the holes too big. I'm burning it back just at 16th at the toe. Check my fit. It's burned down flat. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to give the shoe a clean up. I'm going to grind up the corners with the chamfers so that it's really smooth and I'll box off the edges of the heels. We can see the outside heels fitted a little bit wider because the foot's contracted. I've got the shoe ready to go on the foot. I've got the chamfered outside edge from the end of the heel right round to the inside toenail and I've boxed the outside edge of the shoe off but left a flat area on the outside heel so the foot's got room to move on to. What I'm going to choose now is a Mustad EXL4. It's got a head that fits into the shoe well. It's got a really nice slim shank that'll suit the foot. 
Help the shoe back into position. And we nail on. I'm gonna leave the last two nails out on the outside so the foot's got room to expand. There's no need to put the inside heel nail in. Five's more than enough nails to hold the shoe on. I like to cut the nails to length so that they're all the same length. Normally about an eighth of an inch or about two millimeters. We can use a little gouge to go underneath. When I'm clinching, I hook it under one tooth on my clincher, I squeeze together and pull up. And that way, the nails fall flush into the hoof wall. What I use for finishing is the Pro Finish by Heller. It's a little light polish. Don't rasp the foot back to the shoe, just round the edge off, because we've set it back. Just blend everything in. Here we are, finished job. <laughs> What's important now is to rasp the heads of the nails off on the outside so that there's no grab when the horse lands. There we go, nice and smooth. Good Horschling, the combination of innovative products with the traditional skills of the farrier.